So, uh, three major battles today. Uh, battle of the Coral Sea, Battle of Midway, and Guadalcanal. Now, I do, like I said, I, I have a couple of videos I want to show you. However, since I'm recording this, uh, I'm going to save those videos for the end of class, if that's okay with you. Okay. That's okay with you? <clears throat> You'll survive. Okay. Um, tomorrow, guys, because of the late start, uh, my zero hour, you know, I could keep teaching and uh, record a lecture, but they wouldn't watch it. So uh, tomorrow, we're going to watch a video um, on the homeland. So, guys, when, when the war started, we had to make certain sacrifices back at home. Uh, we know that many women went to work in the factories. Many men went to, off to war. Uh, but also there were things like rationing. I think that was one of your homework questions about rationing. So you, you probably came across things like um, <clears throat> silk stockings. Any of you ladies wear stockings ever, like for a wedding or anything like that? Okay. Used to be a thing, huh? Not quite like that. So, like silk stockings. So, uh, my wife wears them occasionally, um, but it used to be a lot more common, okay? Like Miss Cotter, I had Miss Cotter in her first hour. She's like, what are stockings? She's a country girl, okay? She's like, Never worn stockings, but anyhow, um, what did they use that the, that silk for? What did they need all that silk? Yeah, for parachutes. Okay, um, gasoline was rationed. Um, if you were a farmer, you got more gas than a city dweller. Okay, um, shoes. Buying new shoes like with rubber soles was difficult during the war. Uh, new tires for your car. Uh, all of that was rationed. Tobacco was rationed. Um, certain meat, uh, butter, stuff like that. Okay, so the government would give you a stamp book for your fuel, and you would have you could you were given a certain allotment depending on what you did for a living. Okay, um, so a lot of government control there with rationing. Okay, so the Battle of the Coral Sea. Now, guys. Um, a couple things to point out here. Okay, you can see this is um, this is New Guinea here, and this port right here I'm going to be talking about. This is what the Japanese want. There's airfields here, and there's a big port here. The Japanese want to take this. Okay, we're not going to let them because this would cut off. This would allow them to cut off um, Australia. Okay, so Australia is down here. Okay, so what we're going to see in the Battle of the Coral Sea is something the world has never seen before, which is the first ever aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier battle. Now, guys, there's only been a few of them, and there's, there has not been an aircraft carrier battle since World War II, nor likely will there ever be one again. Okay, now, it could happen, but, you know, we have 12 aircraft carriers. China has two. Russia has one. Britain has three. Okay, so there's not a lot of them out there. And we have the lion's share, if you will. Okay. So anyhow, guys, they make a play for Fort Moresby. We're going to counterattack. Right? Now, my wife got me this book 25 years ago uh, on World War II. <clears throat> And it's falling apart, but I have this little write-up on uh, the Battle of the Coral Sea. And they do a pretty good job explaining it. So if you'll indulge me, I'll just read this to you. Okay? The world's first battle between aircraft carriers and the first major sea engagement between fleets far out of sight of each other. It was joined in spring of 42 in the Coral Sea. It began on May 4th when... A Japanese force shielded by three aircraft carriers threatened to occupy the crucial Allied air base at Fort Moresby on the southeastern tip of New Guinea. Hurrying to counterattack came the U.S. Task Force 17, including two carriers, the Lexington and the Yorktown. For the first 24 hours, Task Force 17 and the Japanese broke for each other like blindfolded wrestlers. Then search planes on both sides found targets. 
carrier-based Japanese pilots sank the U.S. destroyer Sims and mortally wounded the tanker Neosha. That's down here on May 7th. Okay. American pilots had even greater success. Scratch one flat top, a U.S. squadron leader radioed back to the Lexington. Scratch one flat top. What's that mean? What's a flat top? An aircraft carrier. As we sink the 12,000 ton Shoho, so we sink one of their carriers. Okay. The next morning, both fleets almost simultaneously launched their fighters, dive bombers, and torpedo planes. Some 70 Japanese planes versus 83 American aircraft will pass each other without seeing each other. And at 11 a.m., they swarmed down on their enemy's nest for 45 minutes. The box score favored Japan. Both of our aircraft carriers were hit. The Lexington fatally. So on the 8th, the Lexington was hit and then sinks. Okay. The Yorktown will be hit, but it will not sink. And actually, we're going to be able to repair the Yorktown at sea because we're going to need it a month later. But if in overall effect, the Coral Sea battle was the, to prove the war's first decisive check to Japan's southward expansion. The Port Moresby invasion was scotched for good, as it turned out. Moreover, we badly damaged two Japanese carriers, the Ziakaku and the Shoakaku. Those two carriers had to go back to Japan to be repaired, and they were still there a month later and sorely missed at the Battle of Midway. Okay, so one month from now, there's going to be another major sea battle. In this one, we sunk one of their carriers and badly damaged two more. So three carriers for the Japanese out of commission. At Midway, the Japanese are going to send four aircraft carriers. We will have three. Okay, now we lose the Lexington here. Yorktown's repaired. We're going to have the Enterprise... And the Hornet, the Hornet was the one that we launched the B-25s off the Doolittle raid that we talked about yesterday, okay? The bombers, okay? So, um, I guess if you're doing a box score, like who won this battle? The Japanese probably, but guys, nobody has stopped the Japanese yet. So this is the first time they've been stopped. So that's, that's a good thing. Now, on this next slide, I'll show you the uh, Lexington. So you guys can see this massive mushroom cloud billowing up from the Lexington. It will sink. Okay. Now, there's about 3,000 men on this aircraft carrier. How many do you think will survive? I'll take any guesses. 3,000 men. 20. How close was the company? How close was what? Like the other ship. No, oh, they're close by. They've got accompanying ships that can pick them up. If you go overboard, you can get picked up. Okay. So, in this book, there's a same picture. Okay. There's a little caption here. Let me read it to you. Okay. A tremendous mushroom cloud billows up from the carrier USS Lexington after Japanese torpedoes set off the ship's own torpedoes. So their torpedoes went into ours and hit our torpedoes, and boom, that's what you get, okay? By late afternoon, the crew had to abandon ship. Their departure was as disciplined as a routine drill. Although 216 men died as a result of the battle, the other 2,735 and a dog, the captain's cocker spaniel, went over the side without one drowning. Yeah, that's pretty shocking that with 3,000 on that ship, 2,735 survived. Okay. Now, this is kind of an aerial photograph of the Battle of the Coral Sea, so you can kind of see the ships jockeying here. These are anti-aircraft. Uh, explosions here. And then this is the Ziakaku that we damaged uh, 
pretty severe. Okay. So, like I said, a month later, the Japanese are going to make a play for Midway. Now, let me just go back to another slide here real quick and just show you just kind of where we are. Okay. So, the Battle of the Coral Sea is down here. Guadalcanal, which we're going to be talking about soon, is in the Solomon Islands. Okay. And Midway is here. Okay. The Hawaiian Islands are here. So if the, if the Japanese can take Midway and put their bombers on there, they can attack Hawaii whenever they want. We can't let this happen. But this is part of that Japanese spreading out their perimeter, okay, because they're worried about us getting in here. Okay, so it, this is going to be uh, one of the turning points in the war is the Battle of Midway. It's yeah, yeah. This is the this is the movie I'm going to show tomorrow. Okay. And if you're gone tomorrow, I put that up. Now, this is Midway Island. Okay, it's it is midway between the Pacific coast of the United States and Japan. It's a small island. Okay, now this is all coral reef out here, so you can see the large landing strip here. Okay, and Actually, my dad, when he went to Korea, he landed at Midway to refuel on his way to Japan. Okay. Um, it's a small piece of real estate, but it's an important piece of real estate. And we know the Japanese are coming because we've broken the Japanese naval code. Okay. So this is going to give the United States an opportunity to prepare for it. Okay, now, in charge in the Pacific of the Navy, let me introduce you to Admiral Chester Nimitz. Okay, he is the top admiral in the Pacific, Nimitz. Chester. Chester Nimitz. Okay. As opposed to Chesty, who was Marine. Maybe our most decorated Marine of World War II. Okay. Now, so when the Japanese show up at Midway, they're expecting to see our Navy there <clears throat> because we're going to defend this island. They're expecting to see us. But what Nimitz does, guys, is he holds the Navy to the rear. So when the Japanese show up to attack our Navy, it's not there. Now, a lot of the uh, aircraft carrier planes that the Japanese were using had torpedoes on them because they were expecting to attack <coughs> our Navy. Guys, there's no Navy when they show up. So these torpedo bombers, they got to go back to their aircraft carriers to re-equip their planes with bombs to attack the island. We're actually going to catch them with their planes on the deck. One of the carriers, we're going to catch it. And we're going to be able to destroy that carrier with the planes on the deck, which is huge. In fact, guys, we're not going to destroy one, two, or three. We're going to destroy all four Japanese aircraft carriers. This all happens in the span of about 14 hours. All happens in one day. Okay, on June 4, 1942. Okay. Now, like I said, I have a video for this uh, to show you guys. Okay, so I'm kind of making a long story short here. So this photograph of Midway was taken by National Geographic. They went back about 20 years ago and got one of those submarines that could go into deep water, and they found the, le the uh, Yorktown, which was sunk here. Okay, we're going to lose the Yorktown. Um, do I have that up there? I guess I don't. We're, we will lose the Yorktown here. Midway. Say one of those okay, yeah, Yorktown. Um, <laughs> and so they took pictures of the Yorktown at the bottom of the uh, Pacific there, off the coast here. Um, and you know what they else, what else they found? We're a bunch of planes. When you sink four Japanese carriers, where are their pilots going to land their planes in the middle of the Pacific? 
They can't land them on this island because we control the island. Where are the, all those Japanese planes, 200 of them, where are they going to land? In the Pacific. So not only do we destroy the carriers, but over 200 Japanese planes, okay, and their pilots will not survive. Okay, this changes the entirety of the war in the Pacific. So in the span of one month, we have sunk five Japanese aircraft carriers and badly damaged two more out of commission. That's impressive. Okay, all while being on an act of defense, not so much on the offense. But that makes sense to you. Does that make sense to you? So Japan abandons Midway, Fiji, and American Samoa. Their southward expansion is stopped. Okay. And we are able to regroup and prepare for war. Okay, without worrying about the Japanese taking these islands. Did any of you guys see this movie when it came out? Midway? There was a new movie, Midway. There's one from the 60s that they did. It's pretty good. Um, the one they did a couple of years ago. I mean, I was pretty excited about it coming out, but a little bit disappointed. It's no Pearl Harbor. Like we've been watching some clips about it, which I think is just an awesome person. Okay, so Coral City, first aircraft carrier versus aircraft carrier battle, and Midwell. All right, so here is a picture of the Yorktown under attack. Okay, this caption reads, Yorktown engaged in the Battle of Midway was attacked by Japanese vows and zeros. Intense anti-aircraft fire um, greets these planes as they approach the Yorktown. But three vow dive bombers scored is, each sending a bomb into the carrier. Just as it looked like the Yorktown could be saved, a Japanese submarine fired four torpedoes into the carrier and her assisting destroyer. Yorktown sunk on June 7th. So you can see it listing here, starting to turn, okay? Uh, that one too. Um, so the Yorktown pilots of the aircraft are going to land their planes on the Enterprise, which is a big carrier, okay? So they will, they will not have to crash into the Pacific. Brilliant strategy by um, Nimitz, and this, uh, this is great. All right, so Guadalcanal. I showed you where it was, right? Everybody knows where Guadalcanal is. Near Australia, yes? Now, the Japanese are building airstrips on this island. And again, it could be used to shut off our Britain and the Pacific, Australia. Now, I'm going to set this up for you, and then I'm going to show you some actual footage. Now, this, this video came out, History Channel did this um, in 2009, okay? They did a two-year exhaustive search for video footage from World War II. And then they put it together and put it in HD. Some of it is actually in color, okay? This is actual footage from the war. It's narrated, and a lot of the narration comes from people like Richard Tregaskis, which you'll be introduced to. This is a wartime journalist that's embedded with the troops. So Richard Tregaskis is going to go in with the first wave of the Marines to this island called Guadalcanal. Okay. Now, here's this is the first action the Americans are going to see against the Japanese on these islands. So it is a precursor to what it is going to be like on all the islands. And guys, on most of these islands, when we go to attack, we got to use amphibious vehicles, boats that can, you know, go on shore. We call these things Higgins boats. I'll explain that later. But these flat bottom boats will carry our troops. So the troops are on big ships. They go down cargo nets onto the small boats. And then they invade the island. 
Here's the thing, guys. On most of these islands, the Japanese let our troops come onto the island. They didn't resist us going onto the island. Like D-Day in France, when we go across the English Channel, the Germans are going to try and prevent us from getting on the beach. Okay? The Japanese are going to let us onto the islands. Okay? They're dug in. And so when we start to break out across these islands, that's when the Japanese attack. Now, we're going to surprise the Japanese here on Guadalcanal. They didn't think we'd do this. So, this is going to be the U.S. first Marines. Like I said, I just finished that show, The Pacific, on Netflix. If you go to episode one or two, you'll see them go to Guadalcanal. What happens, guys, is we're going to drop off 6,000 Marines on this island. Now, they don't, we're thinking we're going to have a hard time even getting onto the island. But we have no issue there. We've got 6,000 Marines. Now, in the coming days, they've got transport ships that are supposed to come in and bring food, medicine, water, more ammunition. But when the Japanese find out that we land troops on this island, they counterattack. And so in the evening of the second day, as our transports are preparing to unload, unload more troops and supplies, there's a naval battle called the Battle of Savo Island. The Japanese are going to sink our heavy cruisers that are supporting the transport ships. So basically, guys, these 6,000 Marines are going to be stuck on this island for six weeks by themselves. The Japanese are going to counterattack. Okay. I don't know if there's a tougher battle during the war than what these men through, went through on this island, okay? So I'm going to show you some footage of that, all right? So you can see what it was actually like for our guys, okay? It's pretty good stuff. I got about half the class sleeping right now. Hopefully they'll wake up to watch this, okay? And then I'm going to show you a little video clip of what the American people heard about Guadalcanal, which was not the truth. It was propaganda. Okay. So I'm going to pause the video here and show my class these videos. 